we now take, now we're going to do a bunch of algebra, and um, we're going to move this stuff over to the left side, because you see we have a V1 plus delta V1 on both sides. And so we have one half that quantity squared times one, and then this quantity over here, when we bring it to the left, will be minus one half the R ratio squared. So here's the minus one, uh, one minus the R ratio that's squared. And then we'll put this mu minus mu over R1 to the right becomes plus, and it goes with the mu, the minus mu over R2. So now we have this equation. And we can put everything over R2 here, so we have R2 squared minus R1 squared. And we can solve for this, just the V1 plus delta V1. To solve for that, um, the first thing we do is we take this, this fraction here and divide it into the other side, so we have R2 uh, squared over R2 squared minus R1 squared. In other words, this gets inverted and goes here. And um, then we multiply by 2 to get rid of the half, and there's the 2. And then we take the square root of everything in order to get rid of the square. Excuse me a second. And so we get now the solution for V1 plus delta V1. Now we're going to look at simplifying uh, some of this stuff. And so, let's just look at how to do that. And here's just some algebra. I took the mu out, and we have, uh, we put everything here over R1, R2, so we get R2 minus R1 upstairs. And we expand the R2 squared minus R1 squared to the product R2 minus R1 times R2 plus R1. And then we see that we get a cancellation of this term with this term and we get rid of one of the R2's, and we get R2 over R1 times 1 over R2 plus R1. And so now from the equation H that we had prior to this, we have our solution for V1 plus delta V1. And remember that um, V1 was just the circular speed. That was just the square root of mu over R1. And so we subtract that from the uh, right side of equation I, and that's this term that we subtracted. And then we can take the factor of mu over R1, which appears in both equations. See, it's here as well. Um, factor that out. And then we have R, uh, 2R2 over R2 plus R1 minus 1. And this is our final equation for delta V1. That is how much speed we need to add right here to get on this orbit that goes all the way up here. That's what we need. When we get there, if we do nothing, we'll fall back down to this elliptic, in this elliptic orbit and continue forever like this. If we do a delta V2 up here, we can circularize and get into the orbit we want. So let's go to page 9. Uh, we can find delta V2, the circularizing burn, from equation B prime, but first let's solve for V2 itself. Uh, from equation D, we had V2 was R1 over R2 times the quantity V1 plus delta V1. And in equation I, we had already solved uh, for uh, V1 plus delta V1. Let me just point that out to you here. Here is, here is that total. We just use this square root term over here, right from equation I. So just some algebra and the R1 over R2 is outside. We bring that inside, and then we're going to have an, R, uh, an R1 over R2 instead of R2 over R1, because of this being squared when you bring it inside. And so we get a solution for V2. And from equation B prime, it just says we have to subtract um, <coughs> V2 from the circular speed. And so subtracting uh, V2 from the circular speed and also taking this common factor of mu over R2 outside, uh, out in front, uh, we have square root of mu over R2, and then we have times quantity 1 minus the square root of what remains here, which is 2R1 over R2 plus R1. So there's our equation. This is our circularizing burn.
to get into orbit R1, that R2. So that, we have just computed what this delta V2 is. And of course, you have to do both of these. You have to carry enough propellant to do the maneuver that sets you on the elliptic orbit up to the altitude you want, or the range you want, the radial distance, and the delta V2 to circularize once you get there. All right. Now we can compute some numbers. In the Hohmann transfer, going from 176 kilometers to 350 kilometer circular orbit, we'll use as the Earth radius 6378 kilometers, the GM of the Earth, which is mu, of 3.986 times 10 to the fifth kilometers cubed per second squared. And for uh, R1 and R2, we have the Earth radius plus 176 to get 6,554 kilometers, and for R2, the Earth's radius plus 350 kilometers to get 6,728 kilometers. For the first impulsive change maneuver, we plug equations 2 through 4 into equation J. And so here's, a, here's our equation for delta V1. And I'm plugging in the mu and the R1 here. And then we have R2, this value, R1 plus R2, these two values, and the square root of 2 times R2, minus 1. I showed you this in two pieces so that you can see this first term is simply the circular speed at R1, 7.799 kilometers per second. And then we multiply by this small number uh, from the parenthetical term to get a grand total of 50.92 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers per second. Or 50.92 meters per second. Not a very large number to get up to that orbit. And so once you've done that maneuver of 50.92 meters per second, you are in an elliptic orbit that's 176 by 350 kilometers. When you get to apogee, the delta V maneuver circularizes the orbit into a 350 by 350 kilometer orbit. And we compute that circularizing maneuver from equation V2, uh, from equation L to get delta V2. And using equations 2 through 4, in equation L, we see uh, how we get our result. Delta V2, the square root of mu over R2, which is the circular speed at R2 of 7.697 kilometers per second. Uh, and then we multiply that by uh, the difference here between uh, 1 and the square root term where we put in for R1 6,554 kilometers and for R2 6,728 kilometers. This turned out to also be a small number and we finally get for delta V2 a number just a little bit smaller than the one we got earlier. This is a different maneuver and it's 50.58 meters per second. If we had transferred into a geostationary orbit, uh, the first maneuver would be uh, much bigger and the second maneuver uh, much smaller. But because we're going from one small circuit orbit to another small circuit orbit, these two numbers are similar in value. So that completes the presentation on Holman transfer.